really bad. And I don't know why, I'm sure have missed it. So let's stand and sing a call to worship. This is the day. And we will sing it through twice. Uh, do it all twice, 
and then we'll sing the three verses of the Yahweh. And the will come on the fourth, third and final verse, or the fourth and final verse. Oh, will we all get that?
part. Ms. Fran, do you have an announcement? Uh, yeah, Tire Practice, we're going to start fire, fire practice coming to an announce today at 5 o'clock. We're going to start the cantata, uh, the Christmas cantata. Uh, so we can use every voice that you, you can lift up a, a, a voice to the Lord, and I, we don't care how good it is, just come and sing the glory of God. Okay, 5 o'clock. Hey, Brian, well, I think you had a so real quick. So we got a our youth lock in is uh, next Friday or this coming Friday. There's a sign up sheet. I sent a text message out to all the youth. I think one day this week. I don't remember what day it was. Uh, but if you're planning on coming, please sign up. We'll talk a little bit about it tonight. Also next Sunday morning after the morning worship service, we will have a quick youth and parent or guardian meeting. Um, I've been telling these guys we're going on a trip in January to Strength to Stand. It's an awesome conference. I'm going to continue to encourage. I'll continue you as parents and grandparents to encourage your kids to come. It's a life-changing um, uh, conference. So awesome speakers, awesome music. But i got to get it on the book. i got to get it. So I uh, just want to meet with everybody. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it next week. We also got, it's not in the bulletin, but October the... 15th at Beach Springs. It's put on by our association. It's a church camp for youth. It's an all-day event. We're planning on to attend that as well. So I've been talking to the kids about that. So that's it. Any other announcements? If not, we'll have our normal time fellowship now. <laughs> Um, as you can see, like uh, he says, we have a lot of changes this morning. 
Um, and I'm, I'm not Shelby. Uh, I, a week ago, Shelby called me and said, Ms. Randy, can we swap? We're going to be out of town, and can we swap? And I said, sure, that's fine. Totally forgot about it last night, sitting at the desk, and I just happened to pull it up, pull it up, and said, I think I'll see him tomorrow night. And I saw Shelby's name, and I said, oh dear, I'll see him tomorrow morning. So uh, we, we're, I'm singing a song that I haven't sung very much, but it had a lot of meaning for me when I first, uh, first heard it. So just pray that I, I do God the glory for this, okay? Amen. All right, Ricky.
I want to know one thing in, in the order of the service or the atmosphere of the service depends on it. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? Amen. If you're not, you won't get a thing out of what I've got to say. Amen. He already may not get anything out of it anyway. <laughs> I'm glad to say you appreciate the opportunity of being able to stand here today. And, and I hope that uh, uh, Brother Deke and is enjoying uh, the service that he's in this morning. Uh, Brother Robert, I'll need some of your cough medicine that you've got. I've had, that that I've had for five years is bubbling. <laughs> I have a nice way to get some of it this morning. I was going to read some scripture, and, and I don't know where uh, that uh, we have all this scripture or not on the, on the screen or not. Uh, Brother Mike and I worked on it, but it didn't work out. <coughs> Every time it would come, and then it would fade out. Come and fade out. But uh, the book of John, John chapter 4, if you'll turn there. The book of John chapter 4. I'm going to talk to you about something this morning that is most difficult to define and even more difficult to understand. <clears throat> And it is called, commonly called, God's grace. It, and I, thousands of books have been written about it. Probably as many songs have been written about it. The book of Galatians and the book of Romans was written to emphasize it, God's grace. And, and I cannot uh, and will not read the uh, entire chapter, but I do want to read 14 verses uh, and talk about God's grace. Uh, and, and we'll begin with verse 4. And it says this, And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. J Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy food. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water Bringing up into everlasting life. Let's bow in prayer, if you will, please. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be in your house with your people. We thank you for the music that we've heard, for the fellowship that we have enjoyed. Now, Lord, I pray this hour that you, through your mercy and love, and 
uh, and great teachability show us, teach us something today that we need from this scripture. Help me that I may say something that will help someone, that will be a blessing to someone today. We pray and we ask Him that Jesus might be lifted up in everything I say, and it is in His name that we pray. Amen. Now the setting of this picture uh, that we have here, of this little skit that I'm going to show you if I can, is a little town called Sychar in Samaria. And this is very important as to what I want to say this morning uh, because it is located in Samaria. Now the picture that I want to show you if I can involves Jesus. It involves a Samaritan woman and a special will given by Jesus, uh, given by Jacob to the public in a time of drought. And Joseph, uh, Jacob's son, was buried there. It was a sacred, reverence place both to the Jews uh, and, and both to the Samaritans. Now, let's get into this just a little bit here. The Bible says that he left Judea and, and he departed again on the Galilee. Verse 3. Now get this, it, it was a straight shot from Judea to Galilee if one went through Samaria. But otherwise, you had to walk all the way around uh, and enter uh, Galilee from the northern section many, many miles out of the way. But here we find Jesus going right through the middle of, of Samaria. Now, we know and we've been taught ever since I've been in church anyway that uh, the Samaritans hated the Jews and the Jews hated the Samaritans. Uh, and the, the Jews considered the Samaritans a, a, an unclean, uh, a polluted people evil. And the Jews would walk several miles out of the way to keep from contacting uh, those uh, Samaritan people. They did not want to even soil the bottom of their shoes with Samaritan soil because they hated them so much. Now, they thought that they were that much better than the Samaritan people. Now, but here we find Jesus going to find all tradition and going right through uh, the middle uh, of Samaria, breaking that tradition. I'm glad that, that Jesus Christ is and was a tradition breaker. Amen. Tradition had, did not hold him down under any reason, under any circumstance. Jesus Christ did what that the Spirit led and what he thought was right and what he did what was right. Now, in, in verse 6, we find him, something very important here, we find him, uh, his humanity showed it. We found out that, that he was sitting on the, the edge of the well. Now, he was weary and, and he was worn. Now, I want you to pay attention to this, especially that his humanity is just as important in his mission uh, as his divinity was. Why do you say? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because we can identify with his humanity, and it is very difficult for us to identify with his divinity, with his deity. See, if we could, he could, and we can. He dealt with mankind personally because he was human as well as deity. Hebrews 2.18 says this, 
For in him, in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to suffer them that are tempted. Because he went through what you and I are going through and what you and I will go through, he is able to help us. He is able to deliver us because of his humanity uh, and his deity also. Now the Samaritan woman appears. Now this woman, as far as we know, I, I've never heard it anyway, this woman doesn't have a name mentioned in the scriptures here. Uh, there was nothing great or anything special about her, at least not anything uh, that uh, upstanding and good, uh, and we will discuss her a little bit more later. But I want you to notice, I'm going to back up just a little bit to chapter 3, and here comes Nicodemus. Remember Nicodemus? Uh, you see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, ruler of the Jews, and here we have a woman that had no name. Nicodemus was highly educated. This woman was not. Uh, Nicodemus was looked up to. This woman was looked down upon, you see. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. This woman was talking to Jesus in the heat of the day. Nicodemus was rich. This woman was poor. Nicodemus could have water brought to his uh, household, uh, you see. But here we have this woman having to deliver and to fetch her own water because she had such a bad reputation that she couldn't even go there at the regular time the women went. Nicodemus had heard of Jesus, but the woman had never heard of him. Now, here's the point. I want to make with that. Jesus cared about them equally. Amen. He cared as much for this, this unnamed woman as he did this popular, well-known, a ruler of the Jews named Nicodemus. The love of God, the love of Jesus Christ cared for them equally. I want to tell you this, and we need to remember this, and sometimes we as Americans and we as Christian people forget it, but we need to always remember that Jesus Christ loves us all. He created mankind, and He loves one race as good as He does another, but He loves the bad as much as He does the good, and He loves those that are black as good as He does the white, and He loves the Pharisees as good as He did the, uh, the uh, Jew. Uh, and, and he, loves, he loves us all the same. We all have, you see, that we are recipients of His grace, and He plays no favorites. Yes. You and I do. But Jesus did. Grace does it. Grace is for all of us. Now, regardless of, of our classifying of people, which we do, regardless of our gender, male and, and female, and, and all those other things they try to invent, you know, that you hear about on TV, that Jesus loves and He cares about us all. Amen. Now I want to show you something here, if I can, if possibly can. I want to show you how Jesus approached her. See? He spoke to her. He just, verse 7, He just simply said, Give me a drink. Give me a drink. Now, verse 9 says, now this woman was shocked and, and she was puzzled. Uh, how high is that you, that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink of water? I'm a Samaritan and you folks have nothing to do with us. Now, here are, here's the message. There are three barriers that Jesus crossed to accomplish what he accomplished with this woman. There's the social barrier, there's the moral barrier, and there's the racial barrier. Let me show you. 
First, he had to crawl the, cross the social barrier. You see, in Jesus' day, uh, women received no respect at all. As a matter of fact, uh, men did not talk to women at all in public. Not at all. Not even their wives. Not sisters uh, and could be uh, killed for talking to another man's wife uh, in public. The only female that a man could talk to was his daughter in public. Reckon why is that? I don't know, but your guess is as good as mine. They were allowed, maybe to keep them in line or something. I don't know what it was. Or to stop the silliness. Or I, I don't know what it was. But anyway, they had, they had, they weren't uh, punished for talking to their daughters. Well, women were avoided on the streets. There was one group of Pharisees. I mentioned this before. There was one group of Pharisees known as the bruised and bloody Pharisees. They got their name because whenever they saw a woman coming down the street, they would close their eyes and keep on walking, walk into trees, walk into buildings, trip and fall, and get blood all over because they didn't want to be caught talking to a lowly woman. Well, you see, but Titus 2.11 tells us this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all people. Huh? <clears throat> Dear friends, the gospel of Jesus Christ changed all that. Changed all that. Nothing has elevated, nothing or anybody has elevated the status of women like the gospel has. The gospel has brought freedom to us all, to every race, to every gender, you see. Listen to what the Bible says in Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye all are one in Christ Jesus. Jesus is saying, women, you're just as important as a man. And man, you're just as important as a woman. Uh, and all you races, you're just as important. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now I said that the gospel changes that, but we don't listen to the gospel. We form our own opinions. And we classify people and classify races and classify gender in the way that we want to. And that's why, that this one reason why this world is all messed up today is because we won't let the gospel rule and reign in our hearts. And we won't let Jesus Christ rule and reign in our hearts. And our hearts, you see, as a nation is not right. And you see where that we are today. Going downhill just as fast as we can go. You know, the women of the Muslim and Arab countries would not be treated like animals. The women of communist China would not be treated like slaves and, and limited to the number of children they can bear. Jesus broke this social barrier to talk to this Samaritan woman. Second thing, the moral barrier. Here was a woman that changed husbands like some people change clothes. Here is a picture of sin no doubt she was the topic of, of much gossip among the women of Sychar. Now the Bible doesn't say this, so don't say that I said the Bible said it. Could you imagine the gossip that went on about it? 
Well, I wonder who she's with this week. Well, she was seen with so and so's husband last week. Maybe she's with uh, her or uh, him. They left together. Uh, I think maybe she's had five or six husbands. No, I, I think she's married again. I'm not sure. She's living with somebody. <clears throat> anyway, she certainly wasn't the type of woman you want to bring home to meet Mama. I promise you that. I remember the first time that Jan took me home to, to, to eat supper with her folks. And lo and behold, they had some special company there, and, and she had all that her fancy china there. I didn't know what to do with it, all that stuff. <laughs> there was a spoon for this, and a fork for this, and a fork for that, and, and, and a little bit sad about that big ram, and, and all that stuff was on the table. There was a big old white, I mean, big old table, and white table paws, and, and so they, they, they didn't even ask a blessing, you see. And they began to pass the uh, food around, and. So here came, a, here came a, a, a plate of deviled eggs. <laughs> I took that plate of deviled eggs and brought them over. <laughs> Jan, 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 mother said, Jan, you need to clean that up. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't say, her, you need to clean that up, because I wouldn't know, what, I wouldn't know what, what, what a mop was or what it would clean up deviled eggs with. <laughs> I, I don't know when I passed the test or not, but for almost 61 years I hung around, so I must have passed somewhere along the line. You see, there's this unholy woman, and then there's holy Jesus. Perfect Jesus. Sinly, sinless Jesus. And Jesus was talking to her. Now why would he do that? Why would Jesus talk to her? Now, if he was talking to Nicodemus, you'd kind of feel comfortable around him, you know. He was well known in the community, and he was popular in the community. But I tell you, you don't want to be around this woman much. But you see, get this now, Jesus came to seek and to save those that were lost. And I tell you what, I can't find in my Bible anywhere where it says what kind of lost. Amen. I can't see in my Bible where it says what kind of sins. Are you see, he said, I came to see and to say that which was lost. And as far as I know, there's nothing that Jesus Christ can't forgive except the fact that when folks do not ask for forgiveness, and then they're unforgiven. He came to save you and me, didn't he? I promise you, we weren't perfect. We had our lives, our lifestyle, we weren't perfect. But you see, Nicodemus and this woman needed the same thing. They needed Jesus Christ in their heart and in their life. They needed to believe that He was the Son of God. It's the same thing that you and I must believe or we're going to leave here lost today if you don't believe that. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you see. The right kind of water is what she needed. <clears throat> Something to satisfy the emptiness in one soul in her life. The song says, Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting on my soul, bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up, make me whole. Amen. Oh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. No sin too big for Jesus. Thirdly, quickly, the racial barrier. I've already mentioned all, that the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. Samaritans were, were a, a mixed race 
between Israelites and Gentiles who, who brought in heathen worship and this robbed of the uh, Israelites of a pure race and the worship that Abraham had, had given them, uh, the uh, Israelites hated them for it, but the Samaritans set up their own system of belief, their own worship, mainly because they were not allowed to worship, uh, you see, in Jerusalem. And, and later in their conversation, the woman turned, mentioned their worship. Verse 20. We still have racial problems today. I, I don't know where it's, this, it's that to the same extent that the Jews and the uh, Samaritans have or not. Maybe it is. That the Jews call the Samaritans half breeds and lowered and dogs and scum. And, uh, I, and I think that the races today that are prevalent uh, in America do this very same thing. Because the heart is not right with God, Christ has not entered their hearts. They do not live. They have hatred one for another. And what they're doing is we're tiptoeing around Samaria to get where we want to go spiritually instead instead of meeting the problem head on. And the problem is spiritual. The problem is spiritual. Now, then Jesus began to, to reach for the purpose. He came to his mirror. He, he did it simply, calmly. How, how did he do it? Well, I tell you what he didn't do. He didn't start beating on the well edge and, and start yelling in her ear that, that you're going to bust hell wide open like some folks do. All he simply said was, I'll give you a drink of water that you'll never thirst again. Amen. That's all he did. No, making no big fuss out of it. He just told her what that he could do for her. Well, she and Nicodemus had one thing in common. Nicodemus, when told that he must be born again, looked at it from a human standpoint, uh, and, and he said, how can I enter again into my mother, mother's womb? And, this, and then this Samaritan woman looked at Jacob's well, 105 foot deep, uh, wondering how that, uh, that well water that she had drunk from many times had to keep her from being thirsty anymore. Let me tell you, you cannot get spiritual satisfaction from worldly things. And sometimes even churches try to do it. Get, get spiritual for satisfaction. But sometimes we uh, and, uh, try to, 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 to implant gimmicks in our churches to get people to come to church. We try to uh, do all kinds of little tricks to get people interested and keep people happy. And I want to tell you, the people may come for the little gimmicks and the little tricks, but they don't get any spiritual satisfaction or help from it at all. They leave here in the same condition for the same church I'm talking about, in the same condition as when they came in. Amen. If you don't meet Jesus when you're here, you're going to live empty. Amen. You're going to live dissatisfied. Well, when the woman asked about that water that Jesus said, she said, go get your husband and I'll tell you about it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that was the wrong thing to say. I kind of like Kind of like deer in a spotlight, you know. Because she had to face herself. She had to, this man knew her life. 
This man knew that she had no husband. Go get your husband, uh, he said, so that he can get some of this water. How could this man that, that could tell her everything about her life that she'd never seen before, and then she decided, well, he must be the Messiah. He must be the Messiah. Well, then she began to change the subject and get, her, and get herself off the spotlight, you see, and talk about how religious she was. You ever seen anybody do that? Have you ever seen anybody talk to them about getting saved or coming to church? And the first thing they do is start telling you what they used to do. Oh, I used to go to church. I used to read my Bible. I used to pray. I used to belong to this church. As to what church, they don't even remember. I used to. You see, let me tell you, folks get religious about a little thing when they get on the spot. Let me tell you something. You cannot, get this now, you cannot be saved on what you do and what you used to do or what you're going to do. Jesus Christ, that living water Amen. is the only way that you're going to be saved. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus told her, I that speak to thee am he. And oh, no, she went on to know what the woman did. She went back to the city and got all the men of the city and, and said, and said, I'll come home and show you a, 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 a man that told me all about myself. You, you see what I said? That she went back to the city and got the men? Probably didn't know the women, probably knew all the men. See? And, and she went back there and, and got the men and brought them back. Said, I want to I want you to know and meet this man that has given me living water. You need the men. Hallelujah. You need the men. She, the, the Greek construction in that city, in that verse means, yes, I, this man was, this man is the Messiah. Her, her proclamation that he was the Son of God, that he was the Messiah, was her, the fact that she believed in him, her confession of faith. Now look what the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10. I'm getting very close here in a that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's it, folks. That's it. Believe and confess. She ran to get those that needed the change of life that she had just received. A marvelous picture of God's grace. Of God's grace. Jesus' love for her broke all traditions and expectations. She didn't deserve new life. But I want to tell you something, and neither did you deserve new life. How could he care for her? She certainly did not deserve it. She wasn't the right kind of people to have it. Neither were you. It was God's grace. It was His love and His mercy to each one of us Amen. that gives us eternal life. And you can't explain it any other way because you did not deserve it. I did not deserve it. But yes, we have it. And we know that we have it. And we have the Spirit that assures us that we have God's grace. Listen to this. Now I'm following. Several years ago, I mentioned, I, I told you this a long time ago, some of you. Several years ago, approximately 70,000 people gathered in Wembley Station, Wembley Stadium in England to celebrate the liberation of South Africa. And the people were worked up into a frenzy 
by several rock bands of all kinds, 11 or 12 hours of it. The last act of that night was an opera singer by the name of Jesse Norman. An opera singer. Man, an opera singer. At that time, Bill Moyers, some of you might remember him, was doing a documentary on the old hymn Amazing Grace. And, and while the rock band and the crowd were yelling and screaming, Moyers was interviewing Jesse Norman. The show would run clips of the wild crowd yelling and screaming, and then it would swing back to Norman. She told Moyers that John Newton wrote the song, that he had come in contact with religion before, but never very interested in it until one time that he almost lost his life and he accepted Christ as a Savior. He found new life. And then he penned the words to Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. She said that she had read that the tune was one sung by the slaves a folk tune sort of thing. And, and he took the words and combined them with some music and we have the most famous of all hymns, I guess, Amazing Grace. And, and it is known and sung worldwide. <coughs> Finally, it was Jesse Norman's time to sing. The majestic black lady dressed in African dress, strolled to the center of the stage, no band, no backup singers, just her soprano voice, standing in spotlight, she began to sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. The 70,000 wild, boisterous crowd became strangely silent. By the time she reached verse number two, twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. The crowd became very reverent. And by verse three, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have all already come. Uh, Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. And several thousand people began to sing with her. Amen. And by the time she began to sing verse 4, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, almost all of that 70,000 people were singing amazing grace. She was interviewed later and, and declared that she never expected that to happen. She couldn't understand it. Let me tell you something. I understand it. Can you understand it? The Bible tells us the last part of Romans 5.20 gives us the answer where sin abounded grace did much more abound. Amen. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. When grace shows its face, <coughs> sin has to flee. It can't hang around with the mercy and the holiness and the perfection of God and Jesus Christ on that cross that gave us that grace. God's grace. I don't know, maybe it's that be somebody here today that's tiptoeing around Samaria and you need to get your heart right to get down to the heart of the matter God's grace can forgive it can cast away all your sins Amen. can you come to him will you come to him Ephesians 2 8 and 9 a lot of you can, can quote this. For by grace are you saved through faith. 
And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. It's not a works, lest any man should boast. If you're saved today, it was by God's grace. Amen. You didn't work for it. You don't deserve it. It's the un, un, the grace of God that is to me unfathomable. I don't understand it. But thank God I had it. I, I had it. Song of invitation, please. Do you need it today? The grace of God? Do you need it? Have you, have you let it take its work and do its work in your life? You, you can. Today, the greatest to me, and we'll let this friend get ready to sing here. To me, the greatest verse in Scripture, greatest verse in Scripture, to me, does more for me than anything that I can think of. It was told to a thief hanging on the cross. When Jesus said, Today, today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Andy being told that? Jan being told that? Today, in the presence of God, God's grace, we don't deserve it. We don't work for it. We just take it. Amen. Just take it and rejoice over it. You know the place. It's heaven and wayward. How about it? Anyone? Come on right now. Come right now. Somebody said, no, he can't even carry the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> but you might thank you all, but you can. May God bless you. Brother Stan, dismiss us, please. Well, I thank you so much for allowing us to be here today and to be a part of the things that are wrong with you. Father, we thank you for this message today. Father, I pray that you help each of us apply it to our lives. And Father, we pray that you will prepare us now to be back again tonight to hear what you have and to share with us. And Father, we pray that you'll give us traveling mercies and bring us back again tonight. For us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.